On Friday in Venezuela, the Supreme Court hearings conclude over the July 28th election process where candidates and representatives of political parties were summoned to attend. In Israel, due to international pressure, the office of the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, announced on Thursday the willingness to resume negotiations on a possible ceasefire in Gaza. And in Russia, several localities of the province of Lipetsk have been attacked by Ukrainian drones on Friday morning. Hello and welcome to From the South. My name is Belen de los Santos. I'm from the Telesor Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. On Friday in Venezuela, I concluded the Supreme Court hearings over July 28th election process where candidates and representatives of political parties were summoned as part of a process of evaluation of the presidential elections. In this third and last day of appearances, more than 15 political organizations and three former presidential candidates and representatives will appear before the electoral court. In this sense, Frederick Villegas of the Centrados en la Gente Party and the former opposition candidate Benjamin Rauseo for the Conde Party are scheduled to appear and have already appeared before the electoral chamber. In this regard, President Nicolás Maduro and the Vice President of the Socialist Party United of Venezuela, Diosdado Cabello, also attended. We stay in Venezuela as re-elected President Nicolás Maduro denounced that 83% of the alleged reports published by the far right are false, affirming that it is a strategy to stage a coup against the state. From the Miraflores Palace, the president stated that after a thorough analysis by experts who reviewed the web page created by Edmundo González, it was concluded that most of the alleged minutes are actually false documents. The head of state also announced that he signed a document proposed by the National Telecommunication Commission of Venezuela to suspend the social network X for 10 days. And we go now live to Caracas as this process that we were describing continues before the Supreme Court. Let's look at live images. We are looking at, let's listen to Diosdado Cabello who is about to give statements. Conocer su opinión sobre algunos posicionamientos actuales. Some current stances of some Latin American countries. President Boric said he is assured that President Maduro cheated, and also in Argentina, he said Milei said that he acknowledges El Mundo González as president elect. I want to know your opinion about it. Thank you. Well, at the beginning, it is an activity uh, within the formality of the Supreme Court of Justice, the United Socialist Party of Venezuela, and those exposed persons of the different parties of the, uh, of the Great Patriotic Poll. We all attended the Supreme, Supreme Court of Justice uh, summons uh, concerning the affair of uh, the electoral process. There we have delivered all pieces of evidence, all documents that the uh, Supreme Court of Justice uh, requested, list of witnesses and everything that we have been uh, requested. And basically all the information uh, has been delivered by all the parties that participated in the elections concerning what uh, some governments think about uh, 
The elections in Venezuela, the elections are made, are conducted by the National Electoral Council of Venezuela, not them. And we have been requesting these uh, ministers who are spokespersons of the imperialism. Of, they use them for some things to try to meddle in, in the businesses that uh, are not uh, theirs. We have demanded them respect because they don't have the the uh, anything to to uh, deem about the results of the Venezuelan elections, which are are based. Uh, I don't. We don't know which. Uh, in, uh, how come they recognize the the uh, Mundo Gonzalez? Uh, uh, because the, the biggest cheat is to continue governing, to continue ruling uh, through the principles of dictator Pinochet. Um, well, from Millet, we can expect everything. As he said, uh, he recognized, uh, as he recognized an, another president uh, on tomorrow. He could say that he recognized uh, uh, other government. Conclusion, uh, Venezuela uh, wants peace and uh, they shouldn't interfere in our affairs. Thank you. Good, good afternoon. First of all, I want to ask you if you are willing to publish all the tally sheets uh, and as the unitary platform did, and also your opinion about uh, the, the statement of Maria Cor Corina Machado, who said that uh, uh, President Panama, Panama, Panama of Panama uh, said that he offered an asylum well, uh, also the, the validation of this process be from I independent uh, experts. And, well, I challenge everyone, including CNN media, that said here in Venezuela, uh, tally sheets are polished too. When, when the tally sheets uh, are polished, uh, we give, we provide results. We pro in which uh, if uh, someone feels uh, deceived, uh, you have to present evidence. Those are the laws of Venezuela. There are countries in, in which elections are made by photocopies, and here I'm requesting a, a tally sheets in Venezuela. We have a legislator, le legislation, organic law, and general regulation, organic law of uh, electoral processes. Here, we have everything in detail under so much thorough, so much detail, uh, and we wonder, well, the, the opposition has not polished the tally sheets. Don't fall in that lie. The opposition just posted on a fraudulent website, website assuming the, the decision of uh, just posting some documents uh, that they said they are tally sheets, but they don't have uh, signatures of witnesses or IDs or imprints. It is a fraudulent act. They don't have the one who operated the machines, and the, the signatures are just uh, even. It is part of a fraud, and the opposition chanted fraud, and they said said they wouldn't accept results, but those uh, those of their own acts are not the Electoral Council's tally sheets. The attitude that we, we are very clear of the opposition's stance and regarding the Maria Corina Machado is, is not in condition of negotiating anything because she's not in a, even a presidential candidate. Uh, here we have a result uh, that the National Electoral Council
provided the winner of elections, uh, uh, citizen Nicolás Maduro Moros and Maria Corina Machado have to render accountability uh, to justice because of their promotion to violent acts, burning down of uh, schools, uh, hospitals, persecution of uh, leaders, uh, of Chavista leaders, paid off by, uh, through criminals. So we must open, uh, uh, we have already opened a file for uh, the, his her crimes and regarding Murillo, he's offering asylum of course, he is a, a low spokesperson from the imperialism, and that the, the, the chief of the Southern Command uh, gave him the order. Is the attack against our country, and our country will be standing up, and the institutions will be strengthened. And here, coming to the Supreme of Court of Justice, the one who uh, doesn't fear that. Who, who doesn't owe anything, doesn't fear. If you don't have anything to, re to provide to deliver, you don't come here. But certain journalists don't ask them anything about that to, to, the, to them. Thank you. Thank you very much to the United Socialist Party of Venezuela and we were listening to Diosdado Cabello, Vice President of the United Party of Venezuela, who, as many other representatives of different political parties involved in the July 28th election process, appeared today before the Supreme Court of Venezuela in compliance with the summon of the Electoral Chamber. Cabello answered questions and highlighted the importance of avoiding foreign intervention in internal affairs and also to respect the evidence presented before the court and not to fall for media campaigns and unverified evidence falsely distributed in social media. Now let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English where you will find news in different formats, news updates and much more. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. In Israel, due to international pressure, the office of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced on Thursday the willingness to resume negotiations on a possible ceasefire in Gaza. The proposal, which has been promoted by Qatar, Egypt and the United States, will be considered by the Israeli negotiators as of August 15th. The mediators have indicated that there is already a framework of agreement to which only small details need to be adjusted. They ratify that there is no time to lose and that none of the parties has any excuse to continue delaying it. After 10 months, this new round of negotiations is taking place in a context of growing tension following the assassination of, by Israel of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. And while this is going on, on Friday, Israeli genocidal forces announced the onset of another offensive against the Ras Al Khan Yunus in southern Gaza. A few hours earlier, the onslaught of the neighborhoods, the occupying troops ordered the evacuation and stated that they were fighting off Hamas on the ground and underground. Israeli forces bulletins further confirmed at least 30 airstrikes in which they claim numerous fighters had been slaughtered. However, the latest medical reports registered plenty of civilians killed, including, as usual, many women and children. The Israeli occupier revealed that the troops' main target is to prevent Hamas 
from rearming in the southern Gaza Strip. And we stay in Palestine as the Israeli occupation forces simultaneously launch shellings on the center, north and south of the Gaza Strip, killing more civilians. Palestinian health authorities reported that Israeli airstrikes killed at least five people and left several wounded on the Nusarat and Al Magasi refugee camps in central Gaza. Meanwhile, in Khan Yunis and Rafah, in the southern Gaza Strip, the occupation forces bombed a house, claiming another three lives. Authorities claimed that dozens of victims remain under the rubble, awaiting for rescue teams. And on Friday, UN Human Rights spokesperson Jeremy Lawrence referred to the stance of the High Commissioner concerning the statements provided by Israeli Finance Minister Smotrich. Let's listen. Um, the, the High Commissioner is uh, shocked and appalled by the words of Minister Smotrich, uh, according to whom letting two million Palestinians in Gaza starve to death could be justified and moral in order to free hostages. Such statements, especially by public officials, must cease immediately. They must be investigated and if found, if found to amount to a crime, must be prosecuted and punished. We now move on to other topics. On Friday, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida suspended his work schedule in Central Asia after the National Meteorological Agency's Expert Committee announced a possible mega earthquake in Japan's Kanto region. Prime Minister Kishida had scheduled to open the first summit of the Central Asia plus Japan dialogue in Kazakhstan, in addition to a visit to Uzbekistan and Mongolia which he postponed following the seismologist forecast of a 7.1 magnitude earthquake in the Yuga Sea on Thursday. In this sense, the experts assured that if the seismic activity in the region continues, a mega earthquake could occur in the area between Kanto and Kyushu, causing more than 320,000 deaths and about 10 million displaced people. In other news, Russian troops expelled Ukrainian forces from the Kirk's region. The Ministry of Defense reported that over 900 Kiev military deaths from the attempted offensive. The northern troops and reserves frustrated the attempts of the Ukrainian unit on the Russian territory. According to the lately report from Moscow, the total Ukrainian losses amounted to 945 military, not only in the last hours, only in the last hours, troops neutralized 280 servicemen loyal to Kiev. They further registered that 102 armored vehicles, including 12 tanks, 17 armored personnel carriers, and 67 vehicles were destroyed. In this regard, during a meeting with members of his cabinet, President Vladimir Putin announced plans to meet with senior defense and security officials to address this issue. We will have to start with the events unfolding in the Kursk region. As you know, the Kyiv regime has launched another large-scale provocation. It is firing indiscriminately with different types of weapons, including rockets at civilian buildings, residential houses and ambulances. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, where you will be able to re-watch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and much more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. 
President of Kenya, William Ruto, appointed a new cabinet of ministers that includes several members of opposition parties, but the move fails to dampen protests on the streets nationwide. The police cordoned off some public roads as a provision for securing the ongoing swearing-in ceremony of the new cabinet. Since June, riots have been shaking the country and the executive's measures failed to lower the tensions on the streets. The target of protesters had been to abrogate a bill which would have raised taxes by up to 16 percent on basic consumer products. The government did not sign that bill, but popular discontent remained. And now President Ruta faces the worst crisis in his two years in office. Rioters shared their criteria on the country's situation. Governance. We've been calling out for good governance ever since. Right now, you cannot go live on TikTok. You cannot go live on Instagram. They are all suspended. If you go live, they cut you off. If you're showing anything that shows the city, they cut you off. My, all my accounts have been suspended, and we are just asking for one simple thing, just good governance. We don't want them taking all the, our money and putting them in our pocket and offshore accounts. We want the money working for Kenyans. People are here crying for their rights. Good governance and accountability. Uh, and also another thing is allow young people to become who they want to be by not stealing from them, not looting from them. Uh, because one thing that I know is that this country can be run properly without looting of public funds. Yes. We go now to sports as Ecuador celebrated a new Olympic medal achieved by Lucia Yepes in women's wrestling, writing a new page in the history of the discipline. 23-year-old Lucia Yepes, known as La Tigra, won the silver medal at the Olympics in Paris, a historic medal for Ecuador, the first in the discipline of wrestling at 53 kilograms. I am very happy because the triumph is mine. I am in Olympic silver. I celebrated with all my people in the audience, and we are going forward. I am very happy, and I, and I already believe that I am an Olympic medalist. Last night, I was like, I am not, and it really cost me a lot. I cried a lot, and I suffered a lot. In the last bout, Lucia left all her effort in the wrestling area against the Japanese. Although she did not obtain the required score, she won the silver medal a maximum award to the journey and overcoming of the athlete. She's only 23 years old and all that she has achieved, I believe that she has no limit. I believe that the limit is in the attention she's given, in the priority she's given, in the condition she's given. Because now there is an important economic price that is very important and necessary. But the attention, apart from the economic price, is also very important. With this triumph, Ecuador wins its third Olympic medal in Paris, a victory that is tirelessly celebrated by his family in his second Olympic Games. It is something that she always wanted to achieve. It is not easy to win a silver medal in the Olympic Games, and she did it, and I feel very proud of my daughter who got what she did. Lucia not only defeated opponents throughout her short sports career, she also fought and overcame economic difficulties. Now, she achieved an Olympic victory, fulfilled her dream and thanks to this, she will fulfill her mother's dream. Of course she called me and told me, Mommy, I am very happy and it is a dream and we are going forward. Lucia Yepes is now the first female wrestler to win an Olympic medal, writing a new page in Ecuadorian sport. And like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at slashorenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and also on TikTok. For English, my name is Belen de los Santos. Thank you for watching.